on the conversation out today. We're gonna talk to Matt and Trey. They're here to promote that show that they wrote. Don't ever let it float away. Yes, I've waited for it year on year to reach the southern hemisphere. It's funny and warm and completely barnstorming, and now the Book of Mormon's here. The missionary Mormonite made long to put the whole world right. But will downtown Uganda live up to Orlando for elders Cunningham and wife in distant lands and all alone? Remember? Adrift without a chaperone They have to endure A promotional tour Yeah, I'm talking about Parker and Stone On the conversation now We're Tree Parker and Matt Stone Uh, oh no, I'm incredibly sad now to get through that verse and go, it's Elder Price. <laughs> I've heard it a million times. Okay. Elder White would have worked. Yeah, yeah, would have, actually, I think he was for a while, yeah. honestly. It, oh, it was thank, Elder thank White. You for a while. Yeah. Yes. Thank you very much. Casey Bernetto, my co host. I'm John Fain on ABC Radio Melbourne and ABC Victoria. Yes, Trey Parker and Matt Stone are in the studio, the creators of the Book of Mormon and also South Park and so many other things. I kind of am on the edge of my chair because you guys have caused great discomfort in our household over many, many years by the no prisoners, no boundaries, anything goes approach that you take. But congratulations on your longevity for a start. Oh, yeah, it's been you. a long time. We're old now. It's definitely, uh, it's been 20 years for, just for South Park. And it's, it feels like it in the joint sometimes. Yeah, so we're definitely feeling, feeling the years. <laughs> yeah. But it's also unusual for a partnership, a collaboration to endure for so long. How do you maintain that? I don't know. I mean, part of it is that, you know, we're when you've been like we started together in like independent filmmaking, kind of like guerrilla filmmaking. You get the camera, I'll get some sound stuff. We'll go out and you know we'll go out and shoot some stuff, and that's kind of still been our ethic a little bit. And then you know South Park took off, and then kind of like after you go through a, what we went through with South Park, where it's like you have this, you kind of become famous. It's like the only person to talk to about it was a lot of Trey. Yeah. You know what I mean? None, none of my other friends would relate. So we went through that together, which brings you together. And now we're just kind of like an old married couple. You know, we just we we finish each other's sentences. sentences. We, we've been around <laughs> too long. <laughs> You've that yeah. Yeah. We never have. We we just you know eat a lot of uh, take out lunches together, and yeah. you know, but it's good. Yeah. We're still like laughing, so I guess that's the most important thing. I, I, I wondered too whether it's it's partly. Um, uh, I, I heard you interviewed about uh, the sort of uh, creeping serialization of South Park that yeah. started taking place in, in season nineteen, and when you were asked how that serialization formed, you you were very much by not thinking about it very much by just yeah. so by deliberately just allowing it to form. And I'm wondering if that's the case with your partnership in general as well, that you just sort of... Yeah, it's true. We, we really don't plan ahead, you know, and we, <laughs> we, when we, we don't know what we're doing the rest of this year. We don't know, you know, every, uh, every project we do, even Book of Mormon, you know, it really just started as a thing of like, oh, let's work on that little thing again. Let's write another song for it and we'll just see. You know, we didn't know, you know, would it be a movie? Would it be something we'd actually do on stage for, for years, you know, and, and we didn't think about it and then suddenly we found ourselves the ball was kind of rolling and we were doing it you know you take incredible creative risks are you risk takers beyond your creative life oh that's a good question no i don't think so i think we're pretty boring at this point i we're drive pretty... like a total grandma <laughs> <laughs> no offense to grandmas is that a strike oh, oh, oh call it now <laughs> 
I know how to drive fine. <laughs> All right, Mrs. Appleby. But what, what is it then about that collaboration? I mean, here you are. You're both like two little naughty schoolboys in grade eight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What is it? Where's that spark? Um, you know, I think we we <laughs> grew uh, we grew up in Colorado. We grew up in a a, a place where um, on PBS on Thursday nights, PBS you could, is public broadcast. Yeah, it was, yeah, the, the, was the one station, sort of yeah. channel that nobody watched, but uh, they would show Monty Python on Thursday nights. At and there were kids like me and kids like Matt in Colorado who that was our religion. You know, I didn't was, expect it, the Spanish Inquisition. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, that it was just this. This thing that honestly just completely shaped us, who we are, definitely comedically, but even otherwise. And then we met each other in college and we could sort of recite every sketch to each other, you know. And I think that there was just that, you know, there was that thing, that sense of humor that we had, that we shared. You missed your cue. You're supposed to respond. Nobody no one expects, expects the Spanish. <laughs> um, I didn't want to be insensitive to Spanish people. <laughs> or the Inquisition. <laughs> or, the for Inquisition. That or the members of Monty Python who were calling me. <laughs> they, got a, they got a really... Bum rap those those inquisitors. Yeah, they? <laughs> it's interesting because um, the way you talk about Python there. I was in a share house in in my late twenties in in um, North Melbourne, and uh, the one of the prized possessions for, for for quite a few months one year I remember was the VHS tapes of the first season of South Park right, because really? of it wasn't on free to air. <laughs> I think it had been played on on cable yeah. uh, television here, and none of us had cable, of course. You know. Uh, musicians generally, you know, pretty poor. So um, the uh, the tapes were the sort of holy grail. All right, right everyone, uh, put that in. Cool. Watch those three episodes yeah. again. We were you conscious of the series when the series started to snowball. Were you conscious of it coming from that kind of base, or was it uh, it was it just sort of all at once? It was a little like it, because it was it's so it's, we sound so old because it was before the internet. It was before cell phones. You know that that South Park. Took off, and we did this little Christmas card that became famous, this little Christmas short called The Spirit, the Spirit of Christmas. Of Christmas yeah. And it went viral, quote-unquote, but it went viral on VHS tapes, just people copying VHSs and copying, copying until the, you know, the, 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 the quality <laughs> would degrade to you could barely see it. And when South Park went on the air, it wasn't even on the cable. It wasn't available in Colorado on the cable on yeah. where we were from. And it is funny to try to think back to that time when something would be special and you couldn't get it. Like we're Monty Python, we'd yeah. have to wait until Thursday night to see it again. Yeah. yeah. And in the age of YouTube and instant everything all the time, it's hard to something that has it's hard to give that feeling to somebody. Yeah, there's a special thing you wait for it, and it's on a physical piece of media or whatever. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it's hard to reconcile your feeling of how special it was to have to wait for that thing with the knowledge that. At that time, if you had been able to watch them all at once, you would have been like, give it 100%. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. It just feels like that That we're so like lucky to have South Park still have that continuity of, of doing a show that's like 21 minutes or 22 minutes or whatever it is. Just this being able to see it change. The, but it's the same form. I mean, it's the same mm. thing. And 20 years later, how different it is. We're just really lucky to have that. There are no rules from the point of view of an outsider into your world that just seems anything goes. Is there I, anything that's off limits? I think Anne would beg to differ outside <laughs> there. Anne, Anne. Our producer, <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I mean, I, I think, and, it, you know, it's funny because we, we don't, we've never started from that place. You know, it, it, it's, we don't, Thursday mornings are the, are the mornings we all show up at, at work and we have some coffee and go, okay, what, what's this week's show going to be about? And, you know, it's never from a place of like, okay, who can we, who can we offend? Who can we go after? Who's still that? on the list? <laughs> yeah, it's just sort of like it ju it's always about uh, what emotional story can we tell? What oh, I remember this thing happening to me when I was a kid and it was a big deal. And then the offensiveness and all that just kind of happens. <laughs> it's just kind of because we're just those guys. But that, that um, fact that there's an emotional story at the heart of it or there's always sort of a journey to follow is the thing that made me think – I mean, even way back watching those first season episodes that you guys would be interested in um, the musical form. Yeah, for At sure. some stage. Because like even in the the classic season one South Park episode, Mr. Hanky, The Christmas Poo, yeah. it oh, is a musical. It it's is. A, yeah, it's a musical. Christmas yeah. musical. Yeah. yeah. And it's and it completely... No, and, and music is such a great way to do comedy, as you know. Yeah. And, and music is such a great way to get across story. And it's just... And it's so emotional. And there's just like... That's why, you know, the South Park movie, we made a musical. My, it, our first movie in college musical. was a musical. You know, it's just like it's it's just such a great device to get across a lot of emotion and and humor. But so, it's because those songs have those sort of emotional hooks to them that they transcend that notion of I'm going to do a satiric song. Yeah, Let's yeah, all laugh yeah, at the yeah, person. Exactly. Whereas in, in 
that South Park season one. And hang on, where is it? It's hard to be a Jew on Christmas. Yep. <laughs> My friends won't let me join in any games. And, you know, it, yeah, it's, yeah. It, it, it's, <laughs> it's a, good, the emotion of it is right there to be <clears throat> taken and, uh, and, and therefore transcends that notion of, oh, they're just sneering. They're just Yeah, yeah we, we use the term, exactly what you said. We use the term, earn, we earned it. So, like, yeah. if you're getting into some, you know, like you just said, like what we're, you're getting into some material that's, like, about religion or about race or something – if you just go bleh at the beginning, you're just trying to be cynical and just like trying to like just say something nasty. And you can just we watch we watch scenes making the show sometime, and we just go, you know, I know the joke we're going for there, but we haven't earned it. You yeah. know, you earn it when you bring a whole a whole contextual like emotional journey and narr- narrative, and then you can go places that I can't believe we're doing a show about this. I can't believe we're doing this material. But if you just start with that, it's like. It's no good. You know? So yeah. you started out as naughty boys, but Trey, you're a parent now. Mm-hmm. Matt, you're Yeah, I got two kids. Are you gonna let your kids watch South Park? Not only that, actually my daughter is one of the voices in South Park now. <laughs> she's actually Kyle's little brother. She's I, been cussing up a storm. She's been really cussing up a storm. <laughs> but um you know, it's funny, I and it's actually I'm luckily my wife is just as bad as I am. Like I, I talk, believe me, I'm watching every word I say right now, but around the house, you know, we just talk a certain way, we just do. And my wife's just as bad, luckily. So she, she, my daughter's three and a half, and she knows there's things you can say and things you can't, and there's certain things you can say into a microphone and make money. <laughs> <laughs> three and, and a half, words, and those are words you can't say on the playground. You know? Yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll go into confessional mode here. I did walk in on the kids when they were watching, indeed, Mr. Hanky the Christmas Pooh, and I said, "What are you watching?" <laughs> yeah. And got all censorious. And as I was shown more and more of it, I went, oh, hang on, this is actually really clever and funny. But gut reaction first up, as it was for many parents with The Simpsons early on, this is too violent. You can't have yeah, that stuff. Yeah. It's, it's ruining our children's minds. So lots of families have gone through that same uh, growth curve. Yeah. And in fact, you've, you've taken us on that journey. Is that something you set out to do? No, no, no. We, I mean, we, you know, we thought that, you know, sitting here with like five years after Book of Mormon opened in New York and we're in Australia, we'd never thought that would happen. We never thought that we'd get past the first season of South Park, you know? So, um, at the time, way back in the nineties, like animation was just for kids, you know? And now, I mean, kids are still drawn to animation, but it's like animation wasn't, you know, shouldn't be just for kids. It was, you know, and now there's a lot of good animation. Yeah, the idea of an adult cartoon is not so weird. Yeah, but not so weird anymore. I, I'm not described my question very well. I'll try it again. Mm-hmm. Did you set out to change the way people think about what can be shown on TV? Did no. you set out to say, this is all a bit tame, this is all a bit dull, this is all a bit boring, we reckon we can create something that will take people where they haven't been before? I think we were just, we were just fool- we were two guys from Colorado. We were just foolish enough that we had no idea you weren't supposed to do that. I mean, honestly, we we're just like, well, this is funny. Why didn't we do it? Why are we doing this? And and it was, I mean, I guess looking back, it was a reaction against like, we hate, like one of the reasons we loved Monty Python was like, we hated, I hated uh, TV. What, what passed for TV comedy in America in the 80s and 90s was like sucked so bad, you know, and it was so anodyne and it was so careful, politically correct. There was the, there was the first wave of political correctness, you know. It's Sullivan show or, I mean, I don't know, Dick Van Dyke or whatever it was and well, and that, that was, you know, well, those were Jerry Lewis. before our time. But, before, and, and in a way, yeah. those were even better than, yeah. than the stuff we grew up with in the 80s, which was all facts of life and different strokes and couldn't be uh, about boat. anything. <laughs> you know, you things know. like that. Right. Yeah. Just had, you know, and, and that's why this show that happened on Thursday nights meant so much to us. And and I think that we, um you know, we still, there was even at, in college then we were finding other British comedies and Black Adder and things like mm-hmm. that that we were really into and you know we just knew that we sort of had a different sense of humor than what was normal in Hollywood and and we didn't know how far that was going to get us but um it's also you got to remember the two shows came it was the Simpsons and then there was also Beavis and Butthead yeah. which we loved in college and yeah. which was sort of this anar- anarchic like what is this you know yeah. and those shows kind of showed kind of paved the way for doing what we did Trey Parker and Matt Stone, the co-creators of South Park, which we've talked about so far, almost to the exclusion of the Book of Mormon, which is what brings them to this <laughs> fair city and this fair state. The Book of Mormon opens tomorrow night for its big gala red carpet opening night. So let's go back to the Book of Mormon. What was the purpose? I mean, you've 
kind of, again, you've kind of gone nuclear on the Mormon church who have long ago decided if you can't beat them, join them with mm-hmm. you guys. So what did you set out to do? Well, honestly, we we just we grew up in Colorado, which is right next to Utah. And so we grew up with a lot of Mormons, had a lot of Mormon friends. Uh, my first serious girlfriend in high school was a Mormon. So I would go to her house for family home evening and all that stuff. This is all a revenge and, on her. Uh, no. It? And, and, and I bet fact, she dumped you. That's, <laughs> that's what's so funny. There was no not from any. There was just always this fascination with that culture and 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 their stories and the you know we Colorado sort of also on the pioneer trail so we we knew of you know we would literally in school learn about some Mormon stuff in terms of history and so we would go to the Mormon temple in Salt Lake City and do the tours just because like man this is so it's so fascinating because it's such a young religion and it's it's a religion where its prophet just lived like a hundred years ago instead of you know a thousand thousands of years ago and so it's it's something you can look at as a religion and go wow this these are the stories here's where they happen and here you can go to these places and there's you know newspapers talking about it and everything and uh from the time and everything and it's it's just a really fascinating way to look at religion in general yeah, yeah it's interesting because you put it because it's in such a modern context because of that i'm mean, relatively modern context yeah. Then the cracks that would be papered over by a two thousand year old religion are still sort of on display. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But totally. I, I want to say at the same time too that that, that my uh, my take on the Book of Mormon, and I might be totally incorrect, is it, it is often perceived as as I think, and and probably more so by the fact that we've talked about South Park as being so sort of outrageous and all that sort of stuff to start with, as as this sort of rabidly anti Mormon show, or, or yeah. you know deliberately. Uh, and I don't think it is at all. I, in fact, I think by the end of it, it makes its peace with with whatever religion you may choose to follow. <laughs> yeah, that's that was more of the point. And and we do actually have we have a lot of Mormons that come to the show and kind of viewed as their fiddler on the roof. I mean, it, it, they <laughs> they come to the show, they laugh, they have a good time, and they're still Mormons at the end of it. You know, and and uh, you know, it it wasn't. There's no fun in sitting around saying how do we bash somebody for two hours, you know, and nobody Mm. wants to pay a hundred dollars and get dressed up and go to dinner and watch someone get bashed for two hours. You know, it's musicals, you know, are, are meant to be at, you know, at least this kind of musical, musical comedy is supposed to be fun and it's supposed to make you feel good and it's supposed to make you happy. And, um, you but know, also to make you think, but like Mel Brooks think, made you think about fascism yeah. with the yeah. producers. Absolutely. <clears throat> Absolutely. And you know, that of course, obviously we get into that part of it and we love to, you know, we, we want to know what we're talking about and we want to have opinions in there. But the, the main thing that the book of Mormon is about, interestingly, is about a kid coming of age and a kid who's grown up in this bubble of Salt Lake city thinking, okay, I know everything now. And he, he's done with high school and he's ready to go out in the world and change the world and make it a better place. Mm -hmm. And then getting a big dose of reality and being, Mm -hmm. you know, that that's what this musical is about. It's it's something everyone can relate to, you know, going out in the world for the first time on your own and thinking you're going to just, you know, go out there and, and, you know, kick some butt and then, realizing you know the world's a, a lot harder place yes. let thought. me teach the world yeah, and then exactly. you go well actually the world has yeah. quite a lot to teach me <laughs> yeah and it's about taking story stories migrating and mutating and and being passed along because their stories don't aren't useful in africa so then one of the boys starts to change them so that they become useful and that was really interesting to us because that's sort of what mormonism yeah. did to the Old Testament mm-hmm. when they came to America. It's what all religions do. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. They make None it of them are static. Yeah, they yeah. make it apply exactly. to where they are. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I mean, it definitely was using the idea was to use Mormons, which you know they got their little suits on and they knock on a door with their book. I mean, that's pretty easy to laugh at and put that you know originally to put that right in front of a you know sophisticated whatever you want to call it New York audience that would be very apt to laugh at those guys and can sit back and feel very superior yeah. 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 <laughs> and then use that as a rope-a-dope to get them in yeah. and then sort of then sort of switcheroo and yeah, say it. no this this is like a good this is a positive you know musical and these are these stories that make somehow and like Trace said we grew up with Mormons and the goofiness of their stories and the niceness and manner like there's the niceness of them seem to be a very interesting thing you couldn't really make it about Jews or Catholics or Muslims, and you've had a big red hot go at Scientologists already, haven't you? Yeah, you could you could totally do it. You it's, could do it, but that's like thing. Like, sorry, but the Mormons. That's what made people like. If we started out with a with the Christian version of it, half the audience would just like not like they wouldn't be in. You know, they wouldn't be in. They would just Mormons. It, we used Mormons as a vessel to yeah. kind of get you on the one side to rope a dope you and bring you around the other <laughs> side. But you could do it. You could do a musical about any of that stuff. 
any of those other religions. It's just it, it, you may not get financial hobby. backing for yeah, that, yeah. but you know, <laughs> it's a you could write some songs. Hard to raise money. <laughs> and it could yeah. be good. <laughs> oh, I think you can. Get, you guys can get financial backing for practically anything you want to do these days because <laughs> you've financially, I mean, it's been extraordinary. Yeah, you're an empire now too. Is that a weight on your shoulders? Well, that... it was. It was funny because when we were telling people, you know several years ago and people were like well what else are you guys working on and we're like well you know we're actually working on this little mormon musical for maybe the stage and everyone around us was like why why are you doing that guys like, that's a waste you, you guys could some... be out making money like you guys <laughs> need to go make money go make a movie make money and we even knew we thought because of what everyone said we're like you don't make money in theater you know it's a labor of love it's something like it was just a dream of mine to have something on broadway and so we, it was yeah. just, and it turns out it's like the most lucrative thing you can it do is. if, if, it, if it's, it's done a right. Heat. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. We thought it would be a we, – we, we obviously believed in it and we loved it. But we thought it would be hopefully a success as in we would play in New York City, you know, and we'd be there for a year or so. And, yeah. and, the, and some of our fans would come and they'd love it and some people would hate it. But we'd, we'd, we would have done it. We would have conquered that. So we had no idea. We that didn't know it was going to be as broad as it Yeah, was. we had no idea. But does the commercial success change you? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. In what way? <laughs> it makes you different. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't there's know. There's a little bit of evil in that. Oh, there's, <laughs> full, there's full Cartman in it. No, it's hard to – No, <laughs> it's really hard in, in – uh, in the age of especially social media and the internet. I mean, when we, we you know, it's so hard to uh, keep your head when you're like doing South Park to put them on the show, uh, putting them on the air. And you can look online in an, and see instant like reaction, yeah. and you instant reaction of, of your audience. And it's very hard to not try and it, subconsciously or, or consciously to tune what you're doing to that yeah. response. And that's like we art killer. Yeah. I mean, that's like, that's the, that's it. That's the death of everything, you know? Mm-hmm. And so we try to like, not look at the internet, but you can't help it. You know, we try not to pay attention to that you try to do what you want to do and be true to it. But exactly what you said, that commercial success. And now the instant feedback you can get is kind of, can be corrupted. So that's what you create. What do you consume? What do you use in this incredibly new media landscape that we're in personally? What do you, what you know, do you it's, it's interesting because a lot of the sh- shows or whatever it is, we will, uh, uh, a subject will come up and it'll be sometimes on Thursday it'll be like hey Matt did you see this thing and Matt's like no I haven't seen that you know Matt's like hey did you hear about this thing I'm like no I didn't hear about that and we'll start looking at something that we read on, in the news or that we saw on a show that you know one of our wives was into or whatever it is that then we'll start really then d- during the, the six days yeah, that we week. make a show we'll sit there and really get into it and really learn it was sort of you know they're all microcosms of what we did for Book of Mormon which was we knew something about it but then over the years that we were writing it, like we learned, we did our homework, you know, we sure. really learned everything we could. But do you, do you consume daily? What's your, what's your media diet? What's your, do you sit there staring at screens all day? Do you read the New York Times, the Washington Post, the BBC, Matt does. CNN, or what do you do? Matt reads news. Yeah, I read news. <laughs> He's I, I play video games. Yeah. I like video games and news and music. Instagram, Facebook. What, what I, I no, say we like don't t- do TV is probably the thing that I, do. TV is probably the thing I watch the least of, me personally. I just like, I just am too. I'm too like, I'm too like. Uh, yeah. What is skittish? Or I'm yeah. just too like. I got to go do something. TV is too. Uh, too I right now. now I watch a lot of Disney Channel because of my three and a half year old. So <laughs> no, I can, well, I could make fun of any Disney show. Right <laughs> now. I really respect a lot of the big serialized shows, but when someone says, "Oh my god, it's so great!" You know, it's thirteen part show, and it's like you can binge watch it. I'm thinking to myself, man, that's a big no commitment. No way, I'm sitting down for thirteen hours and watching yeah, yeah, something. Yeah. I can't. I that sounds like such a commitment. That's like I'd rather like that sounds like buying a house or like moving or. Or getting married. That's like, no way can I commit to that. That's, it scares me. I wanted to um, go back for a moment to what you were saying about um, the feedback that you get, you, you, that you deliberate, studiously ignore as much yeah. as you can on the internet. But in order to grow in terms of doing what you do, obviously you take in some feedback from somewhere or so. Uh, w- yeah, it's more that it's more that we try to avoid it when we're in production. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's like it because it's it can it's already so stressful and it literally a show airs on Wednesday night and then the next day we're in the room going, okay, what do we do this week? Yeah, and, we should we should point that out actually when you're talking yeah. about making a show in six days, an episode of South Park is literally six days from the start of the writing room to when it's on air. Yeah, yeah, and and you know if we do two much of looking at the reaction from last night's show to dictate what we're going to do that day. I think that's when we can really get into trouble and, yeah. and we try not to do it. And, and I think it's not just us. I think it's the theater luck, a lot of yeah. art. I think it's the worst thing that I think it's the worst thing that like songwriters can do. Musicians can do. Talk and, back radio hosts. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, you don't want any feedback. I mean, <laughs> do, you, do you want to hear your text message? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but our, but, I mean, when we're doing the show, it is, we're really lucky in that like, we don't have any big network 
overstructure coming and telling us what to do. We've it goes on the show like we think it's funny. Yeah. I mean that really is. And there's if there's stuff in the show that's not funny that we just thought was funny, you know. But it's yeah. it's for better or worse, it's ours. Music has, as I said, been playing a part way back since uh, the first series. But uh, starting with, I think, Bigger, Longer and Uncut, um, which is the movie from 99. Yeah. Um, it, it became a, more of a collaborative enterprise, I think, on the musical side. Was it Mark Scheiman yeah. we were writing with? Uh-huh. And, and, yeah. Yeah. How does that uh, collaboration work? Uh, you know, it was fun because it was all, um, especially with South Park, the movie was just, uh, I would, you know, I'm j- I just do my dinky little song with piano and vocals and bring in my little sc- scratch jack and then watch Mark turn it into this big <laughs> thing, <laughs> you know, which Book of Mormon was a lot like that, too. We had our we, we kind of wrote it as an album first. And we so, should mention Bobby Lopez, yeah, who we wrote. It yeah, with. Yeah, so it was a, yeah, Bobby, who's awesome and who had already done Avenue Q. So he'd been through the Broadway thing. But we would me and Matt and Bobby would just sit in a room and write songs. And we thought the songs were funny. But it was really just doing it like a band. Matt would get on the drums and I'd be on either piano or vocals or Bobby would be on piano. And we'd all be singing and just making up words as we were going, you know, probably like you do. So it was just like it. it and, and let's try this with like a Western feel. And I thought, let's try a little yeah, more disco, yeah, you know, right. try to find Swing. feels. What's yeah. the feel? <laughs> yeah. What, and just keep throwing out jokes and keep trying to find the joke. It was it was awesome. But it yeah. was cool because we really learned from that experience that writing the show from the songs, right, rather than writing a big thing and then saying okay now let's shove a bunch of music and dancing into it yep. you know which you can see in a in a in a musical that's you know there's to me there's nothing better than a great musical and there's nothing worse than a bad one yeah. you know <laughs> it's getting stuck there you know but you can see the ones that that don't work so well you can kind of sense like oh a song's starting okay we're gonna just yeah. wait and kind of listen to this song and then we'll get back and into then the it. story will be pushed forward famous yeah. monty python gag of, from holy grail of of the the son you know the the king's son in the keeps looking but oh father, yeah I yeah 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 <laughs> No, nope, no, nope, nope, stop that. Stop that. <laughs> I just want to sing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, and there is there is that um dilemma I think with the with the modern musical for me anyway uh, uh, that uh when the music start there is that transition from speech to music which seems to be the hardest hurdle to jump. Yeah. Right? Because the moment the music starts to come in as an audience member even though you know I certainly feel it I start to lean back and go okay yeah, yeah. because so often the music will start to play and you'll be like I take it you're just about to re-express in song <laughs> that emotion yeah, you that just you just about. told us. Yeah, you're yeah, going to do four minutes it's on such it a now. common mistake. Yeah. And, it's, and it's interesting because you can – Book of Mormon, we, we – not completely, but for the most part, we wrote it in order. We really did sort of write it as it went. And you can see it and we, it really helped because – in Act One, you can kind of have all the fun you want. You yeah. can just you can do a song for the sake of a song because people, have, you know, it's fresh and whatever. And but once the story starts going, you know, we started getting better and better at you know, all right, if the song starts here, then by the end of the song, we need to everyone needs to have a different emotion or a different right. something yeah. needs to have happened during that song. Yeah. And by Act Two, we got really good at that. And if if you notice, if you go to see the show, you'll see that. What's rare for musicals that Act Two is actually better than Act One, and I think our Act Two is yeah. because we got better at the songs really mattering and really, you know, it starts tumbling along, yeah, yeah. really nicely in Act Two, and yeah, and it also to go back to your first thing you said is Mormons. That's one of the things we realized about Mormons is that cheesy kind of Rodgers and Hammerstein aesthetic that they already kind of naturally have. Yeah, it helped that moment in a musical. It's so hard is when someone starts singing. It, it's so unnatural and so weird. Yeah. And Mormons always seem like they're about to bust out in the song. So it yeah, just gives yeah. it. It's a it, level of cheese. Yeah, that, just the yeah, a perfect level of cheese that got us through that stuff. Yeah. And and, uh, and it, it, that their kind of manners are kind of like an old Rogers and Hammerstein musical. It still kind of feels uh, like that. Nothing wrong with that. 25 to 12 on the Conversation Hour on ABC Radio Melbourne and ABC Victoria. Casey Bonetto, my co-host. I'm John Fain. And Trey Parker and Matt Stone are our only guests on the Conversation Hour today. <clears throat> creators of the Book of Mormon, co-creators of South Park. They've been collaborating for more than 20 years. They're in town for the big gala opening tomorrow night. Tickets are on sale at the moment through to the middle of the year. This has run now for five years without pause on Broadway and elsewhere, and it's clearly going to be one of the big hot ticket items here in Melbourne's otherwise normally very busy musical landscape as well. Uh, 
you're getting into video games. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's some video games. Pity we can't mention the name of it on air. <laughs> oh, really? We can mention the Would first that be a strike? One. <laughs> there would only be two strikes. We haven't <laughs> yeah. I think we still have two strikes left. So. Yeah. The, the, oh, the stick of truth was the first one. We can talk about the yeah. stick of truth. Yeah. No, no. Let's just say, um, ladies and gentlemen, if you're easily offended, you just might want to go to News Radio or Radio National or ABC Classic FM just for a moment or two. It's 24 minutes to 12. Pause. Well, maybe one or two people reach for the buttons. Okay. And if you've been fair warned, then let's keep going. Uh, what's the name of your new video game? It's actually originally was called The Fractured and Yet Whole, but then we <laughs> changed it to The Fractured Butthole. Because? <laughs> because the group, the boys are a superhero group, but they're fractured. We base it on the Civil War yeah, Marvel stuff. That's right. they're, they're a fractured group, and yet even though they're fractured, they are still whole. <laughs> so <laughs> Fractured. And there but. might be a point where as playing you... You get a fractured butthole. <laughs> you get a medical problem <laughs> with your. And this and appeals to a, a certain demographic. Uh, are attracted. To... You know, it's another. It's another art form. That's what we got off on. We did the stick of truth, and <clears throat> again, what we got off of. We just really love being challenged. We love new things. And what was so interesting was trying to write a script where the person watching is the protagonist. Yeah. You know, so so you are uh, in, in both of these games, you are the new kid that's moved to South Park and you're trying to uh, get new friends and, and establish yourself in the town. And, and the kids are all kind of reacting around you, but trying to, you know, every episode we're always saying, whose point of view is this? Is it Randy's point of view? Is it Stan's point of view? Is it Mr. Hankey's point of view? Whose story is it? And in these, the story is the player. Right. Yeah. And so you're, you're trying to second guess what they're thinking, what they're doing. And it's a whole nother way to write that's really kind of interesting. And when the other thing we could finally do with the, the technology got good enough for video games where we could make it so if you watch those games, it just looks like the show. Yeah. If someone was to walk in the room and they go, oh, you're watching South Park. And also, South Park, when a character, when, when characters are talking to each other, when you do a close up, they essentially, their pupils are just right at the screen. So now as a video game, and Cartman's just talking to you, you know, and it's <laughs> yeah. really effective. Just that it, it, it brings you in. It feels like you're walking around South Park. Are you going to experiment with or have you already gone down the virtual reality or Oculus path? We've been looking at it. We've talked it's, about it's it. It's funny because it South Park's 2D. It's 2D, you know? so we'd have to create actual 3D <laughs> world of South Park, <laughs> yeah. and that's actually the tough part. Uh, well, three, it's one of those things, isn't it, when you yeah. see the 3D, uh, re- even in sort of a Disneyland park, you see the 3D rendering of a 2D character, you're like, oh, yeah, oh are they really round like yeah. that? Yeah. It always it's, looks creepy, yeah. yeah. So we've been trying to crack that, but just a little bit, a little R&D. I remember the Simpsons did a 3D episode, didn't they? Yeah. Where Homer was suddenly 3D, and it was sort of like, what? Yeah, yeah. It's like a balloon. But we yeah. did some tests that are interesting of like a, it's a 2D, 3D look. So they kind of do look like uh, paper cutouts. Playing cards. Standing on stands, you know, and, and it, it keeps, it's interesting. We'll get there. Yeah. We'll get there someday. <laughs> and then there's movies, uh, Team America, Basketball. Basketball. We just yes. acted in that. We didn't write or direct it. We were just yeah. acting. I'd be surprised how many people still like basketball when I'm walking down the street. <laughs> how, how do you feel about basketball in retrospect? Is, is... You know, it's funny because <laughs> we... For people who don't know, explain the... Yeah, so basketball was a movie we acted in done by David Zucker of the Zucker Brothers who did Airplane and Naked Gun and all that. Um, and it was right the year that South Park... It was the year we got famous, basically. It was the year South Park came out. I think we were like 27 years yeah, old or something, something like Opportunities that. abounding. Yeah, and we're like, oh, we better... They're going to give Zucker. us money. We better take and it. David, we, and yeah. David Zucker. I mean, yeah. it was like a real opportunity to do something. But it wasn't... It was like we learned in it. It was... Don't regret it. It's it's, But it's like kind of half our... You know, it's like yeah. part of us is in that. But, it, you know, we... I think we wanted to rewrite every scene the way yeah. we wanted to do yeah. it, you know. And we, but we learned a lot. We it definitely a lot. made the South Park movie way, way better than yeah. it would have been if what we hadn't had that experience. <clears throat> I mean, we learned that we didn't. We we learned about the kind of comedy we wanted to do. We wanted. We learned about like not like like earning your way to a joke. Yeah. Instead of and as much we love the Zucker Brothers like the the that kind of comedy, but we realized that it's not exactly what we do. Um, and we learned about, yeah, earning your way to a joke, learning the material you want to do. Yeah, and a little bit of learning how to deal with, like, Hollywood studios because watching yeah. them get, like, you know, watching that process, just a more business kind of thing. People, being, that. Well, people in suits telling creatives what to do. Yeah, like, yeah. like seeing that for real. Like, yeah. do you think you hear when there's a guy in a suit walks up and goes, no, don't shoot that, shoot that, and do that. And yeah. this is the way the poster is going to be. I'm like, whoa, like – 
But I think we also learned, we wa- watching that we learned how to deal with the studio because we had, yeah. had no experience. We'd done guerrilla independent movies, but we'd never done a studio movie. And how old were you? And uh, it was how how old were you? We were like 27, 27, yeah. 28 when yeah. the South Park movie came out. And so, you know, we, we basically, um, you know, we learned in terms of marketing and things like that, like to, to hold on to our stuff and to, and Stand to drive up. a hard bargain and yeah. everything. and. So what you're saying is you learned to write and direct your own things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but we, we were before, but it was But a, to do yeah. it on a studio level. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a pretty huge thing to take on Hollywood and the suits because there's, I mean, there's a culture, there's a way of doing things. This is, you know, this is the process. This is the conveyor belt. You get on here and you get off there. And to try and buck the system, I mean, given that that's what you do creatively, but to buck the system commercially. Yeah. That's, but it's interesting. It's we really easy. we've watched the system change. You know, yeah. the, the the system has been through so many. We've just kind of kept doing what we do, and meanwhile, we see a lot of friends getting losing jobs and whole new waves of coming in. And and now we're at this thing in Hollywood where basically, unless you have a superhero movie, you're not getting your movie made. You know, right. and it's all about franchises, and it's all that's that's mm. where everything's at right now. And so it's it's interesting to watch all these. We've seen a lot of phases of Hollywood. And yeah, Hollywood South Park movie work. was a musical. We they didn't they didn't want it to be a musical first of all, and then we didn't. No one knew it was a musical before it came out. We didn't promote it at all, you know, because the idea of a musical, like no one wants to see mm. musicals at that time. And then what you know, you cut to five years ago. There was a time when like everybody wanted a musical. Like musicals were everything. Yeah. You know, it's just like Hollywood's total herd mentality. You know, it's it's. Yeah. One of the things I've really sort of admired and found kind of inspirational about your careers is that um, uh, because you've just done what you do and been following, oh, this makes us laugh, therefore we're going to do this. It seems like that uh, when you have, for instance, run-ins with the studios, you have the ultimate card to play, which is to go... Well, okay, whatever. Yeah. No, we'll for we'll sure. just go. No, oh, and also we do the yeah. voices of the characters. On yeah. South Park. That's like the very best thing. It's yeah. like if they go, well, we'd like Cartman to do this Butterfingers commercial. It's like Trey's not going to say it, and yeah. so you can't do yeah. it. You know what I mean? Well, that gives you. And actually, Mike Judge told us that that was yeah. the ultimate, ultimate control. And there's a lot. There's examples of people creating an animated show in particular, and if you don't do those voices, they can't like take the show they, yeah. they bought it from you they'll take it and have yeah. somebody else do it you like know star wars with that carrie fisher almost what frightens you matt jeez what frightens you hmm um Hang i don't on, know sorry yeah oh here we go yeah um <laughs> donald trump <laughs> now we have been very polite gotta say yeah, gotta two say. australians and two americans it. sitting here talking in we conversation could, we, we got through 40 minutes before he even got mentioned <laughs> I, i've lost a wager on this you know <laughs> Yeah, we're trumped out. I'm sure you are too. The, the fri- That's part of it. Uh, frightened of like, yeah, like right no, right now. Currently, it's that it's it precisely that it's the the climate seems to of uh, political climate, which we try to not not do too much political humor, but that's obviously like front and center right now. The um is that the uh, the pr- the like us being provocateurs, which is used to be sort of a special thing that we were, and you sort of build your skill set, whether it's songwriting or joke telling or storytelling to service being, you know, being a provocateur in a, in a more sophisticated way. Now it's just, everyone's a provocateur and even the U S president is. And so it's hard to, to get to to, satire feels like very under threat, which is a, which is, you know, I guess something we care about. And, uh, is democracy under threat? I hope not, but we're like, when you ask what I'm frightened of and frightened of how, how do we right now, how do we stay in front of that? Say something like provoke thought in a world where you just want to point at that and go, well, that that's a joke. You know what I mean? Yeah, just yeah. like that's the joke. You know, I, I don't and, know. And they've already done it straight faced, so it's impossible it's, to. Yeah, you and know. it's 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 gotten out of the cage, and it's now it's in the real world. It's this is stuff that's supposed to be within a within an artistic context. Like you can't yeah. really say this stuff. You know. Yeah. So Trey, do we, do comedians, animators, filmmakers? Do you have a responsibility? To the audience, to society, I think to it's point probably, out what's you, going you on. You can get you can get in trouble thinking you have a responsibility because you can mm-hmm. start putting yourself on too high of a pedestal. You, know, you start I think preaching, that if yeah, anything, which is hard too. That's the fright. Is fright. Yeah. That's what I'm scared you know. of is that you think you need to do that, and yeah. you kind of do. You need to yeah. be schizophrenic. You need yeah. to think you do. On the other hand, you can get really preachy, yeah. and that can also ruin your stuff. You know, and yeah. I think that it's better to think of our. We try to think of ourselves just more as a pressure valve for people. Of like, okay, for a minute they can kind of just stop thinking about it too but then or have a different way to think about it but not you know we we really tried to and i think we went through a phase it was pretty short on south park where we realized like oh we're starting to 
to so, talk about our point first. And right. we really, we hated the, the <clears throat> sort of the Michael Moore documentary style of things where it was like, here, here I have an opinion and I'm going to spend an hour and a half trying to get you to agree with me. Ramming it down. And, yeah. And, and we really learned with Team America, uh, a movie we made with puppets, that uh, it was far more interesting to us to have people on both sides of an argument and not have it so obvious where we stood on. Yeah. where we stood on it. But um, wasn't, wasn't it, you said it's a choice between a douchebag and a... And a turd sandwich. And a turd sandwich. <laughs> I mean, and, and that's, you know, that's that's making a point about politics. Yeah. Yeah. That's very deliberately. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that, or sp- a particular feeling about politics. I mean, that's a different way of saying the lesser of two evils, yeah. you know. Um, but like Trey said, it's, it is, it's, uh, you want to, like in Book of Mormon, bring back to Book of Mormon, it's like one of the things I think is cool about Book of Mormon is there's like... There is one bad guy, but basically most of the char- – I mean, you know, there's one minor character that would be the mm-hmm. – you say he's a bad guy. But most of the characters in it aren't – they're just being good and they're trying to fumble through life. Yeah. And you don't make these like, you know, kind of silly – like have to do these silly devices to make your point. No, and they're just- being good within their frameworks. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's the sound of their frameworks banging together yeah. which makes yeah. the Right, and that, sort of- that's the f- most fun thing and it's the hardest thing to do. And it's the hardest thing – it's hard to do while you're – we're, we're people, we're Americans, we live in society, yeah. we're parents, we, you know, have all that stuff. You walk in with all of those anxieties, but when you walk in the room and try to figure out what's in South Park, you got to go be true to South Park, you know, and uh, I'm just frightened that that's, I thought, you know, um, it, that that's harder to do, to keep that separation and try to be true to the to the art without bringing that junk in. And try does anything frighten you? Nothing frightens me. Um, except, <laughs> He's the bravest uh, man in the world. No, my, my, my nightmares are always, um, and they, they come around this time of year when we've been off South Park for about a month and a half or two months, where <laughs> and my nightmares literally are, it's, it's Monday, and we don't have much of a show, and we won't, we we're like, oh my God, the show's going on, and we don't have a show. And I, we live that nightmare, you know, several yeah. weeks, and it's so nightmarish and horror. It's that dream that you have, you know, where you're sort of naked on stage yeah, yeah, and you don't know what your lines exams. are and yeah, things yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. Or missing your exams <laughs> that we all can relate, except we live that for a, a lot. Um, and so uh, that that scares me. Isn't it how f- funny how primal those fears are? Because oh, yeah. that, that dream of, oh, oh, I'm missing my university exam. I'm yeah, going oh, to flunk it. And you're sort of like, I, I wake up and go, I'm 47. Yeah, I know, yeah. I How can I still be having that dream? Yeah, yeah. It's still lodged in there yeah, somewhere, yeah. real deep. Yeah. <laughs> oh, those scars. <laughs> those scars. What does the future look like in the media industry, in the entertainment business, showbiz that you guys are in? If um, television's in decline, free to air television's in decline, in fact, television of all kinds is, people are shorter attention spans that Matt's been talking about. What's the future well, look like? Well, that is, but also television has had a. Re- re- I just don't like television because I have a short attention span. But, but you're not I, unusual. Yeah, but I'll, I'll look at the, how big these binge, these like binge watching yeah, shows, are. Game of Thrones. And I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, a lot of people think television's in a golden age, you know. And I and I go back and forth, but I, I you know, I do think that like right now, that what I'm what I'm happy about what we have and what we like to do is bigger, the bigger palette, the longer stuff. You know what I mean? And I think that. Yeah, more than ever, like, people need to be able to, like, look at something for an hour and a half and be able to just, like, something that's worth sitting there and watching for yeah. an hour and a half and putting your phone away. And it's that, it's that that I think is the heart, that, that when you have all these other things pulling at you, <clears throat> something needs to be really good to keep your, to be worth sitting down for an hour and a half. And when you can pull that off, that's the best, that's the most worthwhile thing that, that you can do right now. I so think that so that sounds like a, uh, a a movement towards movies again then because that's we, that form. We yeah. would love to do a mo- we would love to do a movie but it's it's uh the business is like Trey said is like unless you yeah. want to do nine they don't even think in terms of one movie it's like they think in terms of mega franchises we don't really have any mega franchise ideas it's like yeah. and um that notion of okay we want to do five movies so what we want to do is one movie that we take a chance on and then four sure things that yeah, follow yeah, it, you know, yeah. for, and, until the fifth one is just ringing yeah. the last dollar <laughs> yeah, out yeah. of it. In a way, you can get five $200 million movies financed easier than you can one $20 million yeah. Mo- yeah. interesting adult movie. And you just like, that's, you know, but so business side, we'd love to do a movie if we 
Yeah. Some oh, come on, yeah. a Team America version style approach to the Trump presidency. A franchise, a 10 movie. It's irresistible. It's, it's, it's already written, would be I think. pretty funny. Yeah. My, my partner said this morning that uh, to ask you guys how you feel about having written the theme song for <laughs> Trump's yeah, America. Yeah, yeah. In um, Trump's America, I know. Yeah, it is just, that, that just goes to show <clears throat> how hard it is to make fun of now. You yeah. Know? yeah. <laughs> or to eat our vitamins. It's, it's really a hard time for satirists right now. Yeah. So let's wind back the clock. What would have happened to you two guys, two kind of, you know, emerging talents, but whatever, you know, boys at school and at home in the early days, if you hadn't chanced upon each other or that kind of sliding doors moment, if, mm-hmm. if it hadn't worked straight off? Where, where would your creative juices have taken you instead, do you think? <laughs> Trey? Uh, boy, I don't know. Because I've just, I, I've been making movies since I was eight. I've been, I, I wrote my first um, album. I was 16 and wrote an album of comedy songs and sold it at school. Like it was, and, and then I was drawing and all my drawings that looked like South park, you know, I was filling up books with that. You know, I, I was, I was going to do something creative and, but like the, the truth is that I get so much satisfaction out of cooking, out of uh, designing houses, <laughs> you know, things like that, that just like, there's so many ways to be creative um, that, that, uh, you know, I would have found, I think, something to be satisfied at, but, but it is funny. I think we, Matt and I both had this attitude of, we were Colorado boys and we were going to live in Colorado for sure. Mm -hmm. And we would, our families would be raised in Colorado and we, we had this attitude of, well, let's go to LA and make some money and then we'll come back to Colorado and go back to our normal life and be normal people again. And we... (laughs) still have that attitude and and but that's what that attitude has really helped us and like the thing you're saying when <clears throat> studios were like you know for instance when they're like no 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 we want the south park movie to be rated pg-13 not rated r and we're like no no no, it's going to be rated r and they're like no we're not going to do a rated r movie we're like okay then we'll go back to colorado yeah. we'll go you know, right that, back we'll that, go that, right we're, back like, we're, we're so, so ready to go back to colorado <laughs> and, at any time and i love the the sort of blinking in comprehension of the studios yeah, for that you know which what? is like what you you do not wish to kiss the yeah. hem of our garment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, th- that that sort of mentality of fine, we'll go back to Colorado and just do normal stuff it, because it sounds great. It's not you know yeah, it, it's, it's not bad. an empty thread. It really has always place. sounded great. It's a great place. <laughs> but that col- I'm, I'm intrigued by the collaborative spark. We see it from time to time. You know, um, we, we talk about the Gershevitzes, or you can talk about the great collaborations in showbiz, especially in musicals. Interestingly, and and in music too. And, you know, Simon and Garfunkel. You could rattle off thousands of them what actually have you ever tried to distill it's just that we're actually really different people we just have this you know we're very different we just have this one super common kind of vein the similarity with comedy and with comedy especially i i've never under i mean there's a lot of brilliant comedians that are just singular but for us it's like you need someone to say it and you need someone to laugh and a lot of times the and you know you get the the best joke comes from like you know you say a joke you put something on top I put something on the top, and then someone takes it, and it's like, that's the joke. You yeah. know what I mean? And yeah. it's like that ping pong, that me- it's like mental intercourse. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's where you really layer it and make it fun. And I, I have ultimate respect for people who can do it by themselves, but that's not sure. – But not you us. must have great respect, even love for each other. Oh, yeah. It's I know, a sort of love. It, yeah, but it's – It's, it's comedy It's love. interesting because, you know, after all these many years – so when we're when we're together now we're working basically yeah. you know what I mean like like if we're in the Except same room now. it means there's it means oh we've got to do stuff yeah oh, this is this yeah, is like doing a press tour <laughs> right but it is funny how and it and it gets it's gotten rare and rare especially since we have family now Matt lives mostly in New York and I live in L A so it's like uh, Not there's, there's, in Colorado. there's more no we didn't more, end up in Colorado more and more but rare, we'll go back yeah Gosh, there's more it. more and more rare times that we're just hanging out and we don't have to do anything but when we do <clears> when it happens I think we both remember that oh yeah we actually really like each other right you know what i mean like i i like hanging out with matt i think matt likes hanging out with me you know like we we can we can still do that is you know, there just... is there some degree to which you want to foster that feeling in the writer's room when you're doing south park for instance or something like that that it... it's just the writer's room just always feels like oh man we're so <laughs> we're in so much trouble right now <laughs> it's come on we got to get out of this like it just feels like us against the world in a yeah way, you know? that, and that, so, that's a bonding that's a bonding yeah. dynamic there you know it's stressful but it's also like you know we're stuck together we're, we're like we, we jumped in we we, we jumped off this cliff and we have to build an airplane together on the yeah. way down that's kind of the way we do the show every week. <laughs> every week it's like all right you start building that bit i'll start building this bit how, oh, are we gonna how do we this? jump out of the ship again yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> we shouldn't have done that but stress is productive isn't it well deadlines are, yeah deadlines are inspirational. there's no way there would be this many south parks because when it gets to monday every almost every single week i'm like 
this show's terrible. I'm I'm, I'm cool. never going to finish it. Like let's not let's not put this on the air. And you know somehow it's like well we just got to put something on so let's do it. And sometimes it'll end up being the show everyone loves. You know, and it's just like. It, there, there's no time for writer's block when you're doing a show, yeah. show in six days. There's a, a documentary called Six Days to Air that yeah. uh, mm-hmm. Comedy Central did. Is that is that an uh, accurate? Yeah, completely totally accurate. Picture Comple- of, that yeah. wasn't a that wasn't a it happened to be that way that week. It's like that's every week <laughs> on the show. Yep. <laughs> And uh, Anne, who is outside the producer, also features in that documentary, um, very much wrestling with the uh, uh, practices and standards yeah, or whatever. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> the best part of the whole thing. <laughs> I guess, though, like lots of high achievers, you're probably your own harshest critics. Absolutely. You drive <clears throat> yourselves. Yeah. 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 And, and you know, we want to – we have the – the desire to outdo ourselves every week, you know, but it doesn't happen. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I, I really, I, when I get bummed out on Monday or Tuesday, I always have this feeling of like, man, our fans deserve more than this and I'm not giving them enough, you know? And that's when I start feeling really bummed out, you know, but, yeah. um, and remember with book of Mormon, it, we, now we've done enough different, we've done movies, we've done video games and, each one of those, you kind of have a different contract with the audience a little bit. And with the Book of Mormon, the stress was, and it's kind of, it's, it's small, but it's huge. It's just like, and when we were writing it with Bobby, we always talked about, well, this has to be a good night out. Like, that's really what you're trying to do. Like, people are going to get dressed up. They're going to spend a lot of money. Like, going to the theater is different than, like, watching an episode of South Park. You spend a lot of money. You're going to go out, whatever it is. And it's like, to actually deliver two hours of something so it's a good night, that's actually harder that's really one of the hardest things to do. So that felt like the pressure. So every every time has a different kind of pressure. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you uh, briefly about Book of Mormon because this was a thing that came up, I think, when Book of Mormon was first cast and there were some Australian performers going, oh, they've got two Americans. <laughs> yeah. Bringing out two Americans mm-hmm. for the league. Yeah. What's your stance on that? We, it's, it, it's really – it's seeding it. You know, it's really, it's really hard to, to – uh, there's a tone to Book of Mormon that you've got to hit the tone right. And if you mm-hmm. don't, a lot of this – Things can just look like being offensive for offensive sake. You know, yeah. there's, there's a tone that you've got. To, and we learned early on that, like, you need some of the – some people that have done it. You need some veterans to come in and right. set the tone. And then, you know, the company changes. The company changes every six months. It's a you know? living, so it's a living coming, oh. organism. Yeah, so we change. just – we bring in people that are veterans just so that they can get that tone right. And then we start bringing in the, you know, a lot yeah. more of the locals and things like that. Yeah. Our time has just evaporated. Oh. It's just gone way too And no fast. strikes or one strike? No strikes, strike, right? Two, one strike. two I we think. Two. Oh, let's go. Two. You, you just weren't <laughs> trying Lightning round. Two, two more enough. strikes. Let's go. <laughs> Sneak one in under the wire. Come on. <laughs> Trey Parker and Matt Stone, co-creators of South Park and co-directors and writers of the Book of Mormon. It's been great fun. There's heaps of fan mail, as you'd expect, coming in. Gentlemen, thank you both very much. Enjoy Melbourne and thanks for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Trey Parker and Matt Stone with Casey Bonetto, my co-host. Casey, it's been fabulous yet again and thank you ever so much. Thank you, John. This is The Conversation Hour.